We warmly welcome you for another edition of In Conversation brought to you by Daily Mirror. And today I have with me a special individual representing the trusted industry leader in finishing furnishing. And they have diversified into so many avenues, setting a great example, and they are stepping into something very exciting, which is right around the corner. So to talk more about it, I have with me the Chief Executive Officer of Jet Holdings Limited, Nishal Ferdinando. Hi, Hirsh. Thank you so much for joining me with us. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, so talking about Jet, you know, the name itself, you know, it, it's, it, it has created a tremendous impact. And, and being a successfully established brand in the wood coating industry, being one of the leaders, uh, how has the journey been so far? Well, the simple word is the journey has been extremely exciting. We have incorporated the company in 1993 and since then we have achieved a lot of milestones which we have celebrated and which we take pride of being a 100% Sri Lankan company. So just to give you a walkthrough on our journey and some of the specific milestones we have achieved. So incorporated in 1993, JET was predominantly in the wood coating sector and we were the company that introduced water-based wood coatings to the Sri Lankan market. From there onwards, I would say we can use the word revolutionized the Sri Lankan market through the wood coating, a water-based wood coating. And that was with a partnership with an Italian company called Sailac. So Sailac was the first company in the world to introduce water-based wood coatings. We were their partner from 1995 onwards, and we introduced the water-based wood coatings to Sri Lanka in 1998. Uh, since then, we have introduced a lot of other wood coatings such as PU uh, and different different uh, sectors, say for example, for roofs, for ceilings, for wood flooring, for uh, timber doors, for windows, that entire industry, if I would say every household in Sri Lanka at one given point has used a jet wood coating product. So that has been our journey in a nutshell in the wood coating industry. Since we have established a market leadership in Sri Lanka and we have enjoyed this market leadership, I would say, for over 15 to 20 years in this sphere, we decided to venture out to Bangladesh as well. So in uh, the year 2010, we established our own company in Bangladesh where we were again, the word I would use is revolutionize that industry as well from the usual NC and the polish industry for wood coatings we elevated it to a pu industry right pu stands for polyurethane coatings which is a high high quality wood coatings and now we are uh, exclusively supplying if you take the top 12 13 uh, industrial customers in bangladesh we exclusively supply 70 percent of them purely on that we have expanded to maldives and to india and on this on this strength we have also introduced brushes where we are the leader in the Sri Lankan market, having obtained the agency for Harris. Uh, we are also we also represent uh, some of the world class brands like Herman Miller, Herman Miller, which is one of the best furniture in the world, ergonomic furniture. We introduced it to Sri Lanka through uh, Herman Miller. Then uh, Armstrong Ceilings, the number one world's biggest ceiling company. And we also represent CR Baufermat, a luxury German high quality kitchens. So we, as a whole, we represent some of these world-class brands. Plus we have our own brand, brands, which we have developed in-house, like Brushmaster for brushes, Eurometric for ceilings. We are the only ceiling manufacturer in the country. And uh, we do our own brand called Masters Wood Coatings and JKM Wood Coatings. So it's a nice blend. It's a nice blend. And I would say the pinnacle of some of our achievements through this is we were uh, we got the bronze award, uh, which is a great milestone for overall business excellence at the National Business Excellence Awards in 2019. We have been accredited by Moody's, uh, ICRA Moody's rating as a A-plus stable company 
for five consecutive years. We are one of the few private companies to have this rating from uh, Moody's Ikra. So all of these, I would say, are the efforts that we have put in and the journey that we have had. And these are the things that actually sort of uh, makes us proud of what we have achieved and what makes us strive for even more success in the market. That's true. And, and also, uh, when it comes to crafting the ideal products and services to meet end user requirements, I think uh, innovation is of paramount importance. So, uh, as far as innovation is concerned, how is Jat standing out from his competitors? Yes, so Jat, the founder, Elian Gunwadan itself, is into his, his major secret, I would say, to his success has been innovation, thinking out of the box. So even from the point where we introduced wood, uh, water-based wood coatings, it was the, we were the first company, like I said earlier, to introduce in Sri Lanka. And initially at that point, water and wood didn't go hand in hand. Right? If you just think about water and wood, people would say, how can you put water on wood? Right? It will either expand or it would have an issue. But he, he, had the, he had the vision and he also backed the technology to introduce that to Sri Lanka. And when it comes to innovations in the wood coating area, we have been the one to introduce, like I said previously also, PU, which is a high quality finish uh, where no one had used it in Sri Lanka. We bought it to Sri Lanka and not only did we bring Italian products to Sri Lanka and just introduce it, we tailor made it to suit the Sri Lankan environment, atmosphere and also the Bangladesh environment. And, Atmosphere. So the innovation through certain R&D, we have tweaked the products to suit it here. And that's how we have obtained market leadership here. So through this innovation, I'm proud to say that we are CLX world's biggest partner uh, for them. And CLX is owned by Sherwin Williams, which is the world's biggest paint manufacturer. So we are proud to say that that wood coating product we represent, we are even bigger than Russia, right? Uh, having the market rights for South Asia. They have even, due to this innovation that we have shown, they have even given us the rights to access maybe about 70% of the African countries as well. So as a Sri Lankan company, I think through innovation, the achievement, the final achievement is usually even in India, right? Usually Indian company has rights to Sri Lanka. Here it's a unique thing where a Sri Lankan company has the exclusive rights to, uh, to enter India for the CLAC brand. And that is through constant innovation. Uh, further to that, I would say that even uh, when it comes to brushes, I told you we are the leader in the brush segment in, uh, in Sri Lanka. So we were the first to introduce DuPont filaments instead of hog hair bristles to the brushes. So that was another innovation which we did maybe way back in 2016. Uh, and uh, another interesting project which uh, we have got uh, a lot of awards in New York, London, Thailand, uh, is this petal paint concept, where we actually uh, collect the flowers that are sort of uh, given for or in the temples, right? Because that's a huge problem in Sri Lanka. All the flowers that are offered in temples, right? They don't know what to do with it, right? So what we did was we collect these flowers from the temples and we formulated through our R&D a certain product a paint that is made out of these petals and we offered it to the temple it's a csr project which we did we offered this paint made out of petal to the uh, temples itself to paint their murals and this project actually that innovation part was it was first time actually it was done through petals and uh, that i would say was a pinnacle in our uh, innovation and in our bold steps to sort of every day to improve our R&D process and to try to try new things. So I would say that these are some of the things that uh, to answer your question, how JET has stood out from the competition by always being bold enough to innovate and take the risk. It's really impressive and also we can see that uh, apart from JET being a diversified conglomerate performing in an array of areas, you also go beyond the local realm. So let's talk about your operations regionally as well. Yes. So I would like to sort of uh, identify JAT as a Sri Lankan multinational, right? So like I told you, we have the exclusive rights for CLAC in South Asia and in Africa. We have set up offices in Bangladesh, in India. 
Uh, we have distributors in Maldives, Pakistan. Uh, at the moment, we have in Ghana, Kenya, Mauritius, and Seychelles, uh, and Uganda in some of these uh, African countries. So, uh, we are looking beyond the horizons of this country, of Sri Lanka. And with the know how that we have in this wood coating sector and the experience which spans over 28 years, we not we, we, we go to these markets. Now, if you take, I'll just give you an example. When we went to Bangladesh, Bangladesh was, in terms of wood coatings, somewhat more primitive than the state that the Sri Lanka wood coatings was, right? The industry was. But we revolutionized this to such an extent that today, Bangladesh has a huge export market for wood products, right? Due to our input to them for the coating industry. So the Bangladesh, now today if you take, Bangladesh is far superior in terms of wood coatings due to our introduction of this PU coatings. Right? Now if you take Africa, Africa would yet, I would yet consider it a sort of a virgin market in terms of wood coatings because it is at the same state that Bangladesh was or Sri Lanka was 15 to 20 years back. So we have the know-how, we have the technicians, we have the R&D expertise to develop these products also to suit Africa. So we are looking at very strongly our Bangladesh operation of course is the biggest market that we have uh, in terms of international presence. We have our own company with about 60-70 staff for the last I would say 10 years operating in Bangladesh conditions and we know the market. So this is our biggest revenue driver. We get about 25% of our total revenue purely from Bangladesh. And going back to Africa, we feel that we can, in the next two to three years, change this African market in the similar way that we did Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. And so that, uh, that I would say sums up our international presence uh, overseas. And now we can see, um, as I mentioned earlier, there is something exciting right around the corner, uh, which is uh, the fact that JAT is actually stepping into entering an IPO. They are taking it up a notch, making it a more shared experience. So what circumstances encourage the company to step into such a decision? Yeah, so uh, <coughs> that, uh, like I told you, after 28 years of operation, uh, the founder, owner and the managing director, Ilian Gunawardana, had a vision to sort of unlock the potential of the company and to share our story. Right, and our future endeavors with the public in Sri Lanka. So we as a company, we are very strong financially. Even last year, if you take last financial year, we were cash flow positive. We ended the year 31st March with a cash positive. So we, we do not need, uh, like most IPOs, we don't need the funds to settle debt, right, or to retire debt. Right, but we, we are looking more on expansions of our foreign markets, expansions into uh, Africa, Bangladesh through these proceeds. And I think in simple terms, unlock the potential of this company right, and share a success story with the Sri Lankan public. Right, and for the company, I would say to be uh, more visible even in foreign countries, and it also gives us the possibility in four to five years time to even list in Bangladesh. When you are listed in Sri Lanka, it's more easier because we have a company there as well. So if you want to list that in Bangladesh, it makes sense to be listed in the Colombo Stock Exchange. So I think that, that and the vision and see, I would also say that when a company grows, you have to get more sort of outside external directors into your board. You need to have that diversity. You need to, you need, you should come out of the uh, single entrepreneur mentality, which he has been doing right throughout these 28 years. And this is not something that we, the decision that we took yesterday or just one year back, right? We have been planning this for over four years, right? And being a private company, we have an independent chairman, right? As the, in, in the board, we have more independent non-executive directors in the board than executive directors, right? We were one of the few private companies who published uh, annual report. And not only did we publish it, it was an award-winning annual report for two years, right? So we have been preparing for this. And I would say now was the time that we felt that, okay, we should go for the IPO in this year. To change the environment, to bring new perspective. 
Yes, of course. So, so speaking of the IPO, I would like to know what key objectives are behind this particular step. So, uh, like I told you, there is no retirement update. So, we are focusing purely on expansion of our core business. And this is uh, one, the main thing is to set up a manufacturing plant in Bangladesh, backward vertical integration initiative. Since we are already present in Bangladesh and like I told you, we do over about 2 billion revenue in Bangladesh. So it makes perfect sense to now start manufacturing. And if you, when you manufacture the cost of the goods, obviously it will improve our bottom line, our GPs. Plus it gives us access to penetrate the Bangladesh market even more due to the uh, passing off certain cost benefits to the end consumer. So this is one of our major projects. The second one is we are investing in a state of the art R&D facility, right, which uh, we we feel that will support the Bangladesh operation, the manufacturing plant, as well as the Sri Lankan operation too. So we plan on getting state-of-the-art machinery to reverse engineer and uh, certain machinery to or certain equipment to reverse engineer and certain equipment in order to better the products. So again, through this initiative, we feel that we can increase the quality of our existing products. We can bring down the cost of our existing products and we can introduce to the market tailor-made products, right? And we, we hope to get about 12 scientists from overseas as well to work in this R&D facility. Uh, the next one is we have launched White by Jet, a new sort of concept in Brilliant White Paint, where it's an online platform where we offer only Brilliant White Paint directly to the end consumer at an unbelievable 40% discount. So this concept we started last December and it really kicked off. So we would also use some of these funds to even increase our market share in the decorative paint industry. And finally, maybe in 2022, we want to invest in a plant in Africa as well. So it's, it's the same backward vertical integration in Africa, similar to Bangladesh to capture market share. Yes, uh, Nishal, for the purpose of insight, could you explain to me um, the valuation behind the 27 rupee price per share? Yes. So the valuation was done by uh, Capital Alliance Limited, who is our investment managers, and they are a professional company who does valuations and an independent company as well. So they valued the company at about 16 billion, which works out to 32 rupees per share. So initially, directly in the IPO, when we come at 27, we are offering the investor a 21% uh, upside on the share because a share that is worth 32, we are giving it to the market at 27. And if you look at the methods of valuation, it was the discounted cash flow valuation which was used, which is the valuation method that a paint company, if you take, a paint company does not uh, need a lot of equipment and asset heavy uh, investments, right? It is more about the brand and more about the expertise, more about the R&D. So in that sense, the revenue generation does not depend on our net asset value. So they didn't go for a net asset valuation. They went on this discounted cash flow valuation, which gives, which takes our potential revenue earning capacity capability and it discounts to the present value. So that was the uh, that was the valuation method which they gave 90% weightage on and another 10% weightage they weightage they gave on the PE method because JAT is the only uh, paint company that is going to list in the CSC. So there was no comparable peers in the CSC. So what they actually did was they gave a weightage of 10% for local and since we are predominantly present in Bangladesh and most of our revenue, uh, most of our uh, investments which we are taking from the stock exchange is for Bangladesh, right? And indirectly for Bangladesh through the R&D uh, and we have the presence in Bangladesh. We have also taken the industry PE in Bangladesh as well. So they have compared with pain companies in Bangladesh and maybe peers in the local market and also taken given a 10% weightage for PE valuation. This combination has given a total valuation of that 16 billion, which I uh, mentioned to you earlier. Yes, in, in, in amidst this context, what is the expected trajectory of that holding? Yeah, so uh, in terms of, in terms of uh, our future expansions, we hope to double our revenue internationally uh, in the next four years. Right. We hope to also increase our local revenue by at least 70-80% uh, in the next two to three years. This year, 21-22, we hope to 
uh, achieve a profit after tax of 1.2 billion. And if you look at our previous performances, we have been within that mark, except last year where uh, with this, uh, with the COVID, with the COVID uh, issue, we have achieved uh, lesser. But if you normalize it, because there were certain markets that were closed and all, our normalized profit for last year was around 913 million. So compared to that, 1.2 billion is easily achievable. And the first quarter, what we, the first quarter we have achieved our top line and bottom line budget. So we are pretty confident that we would achieve this and the trajectory that we have forecasted that we could achieve with all the investments that we are making and uh, the brand value and the R&D expertise and the backing that we have from all our suppliers and clients, I think would enable us to achieve this, uh, the planned trajectory in the next three to four years. True, and also it has come to our attention that uh, the central bank has tightened their controls in terms of the outflow of foreign currency. Yes. So within these limitations, will it impact uh, the decisions to further invest in countries like Africa and Bangladesh? Okay, so uh, we, like I told you, since we are present internationally, right, we have operations overseas, we have 100% on subsidiaries overseas, which obviously have a cash flow, self-generated cash flows in foreign currency. So in the intermediate, if the restrictions, uh, uh, I think, continue, we could fund this from the subsidiaries that we have overseas. We can fund the Bangladesh operation as well because the Bangladesh manufacturing plant, uh, the expenditure is, uh, is spread over nine months. So we are quite comfortable in the inter interim to fund these operations from our overseas overseas companies, the 100% owned subsidiaries. We have adequate working capital, which we can easily fund it. And so I don't see that as a challenge in the interim. And even if it extends beyond a year or two even, we yet have self-generated funds in those companies to enable us to do both Bangladesh and Africa. It's true. And uh, so it, it has been a tremendous journey and there's so much more in store for you guys. And, and uh, there are different entities, investors, consumers who will be uh, a part of this journey as well. And uh, just I would like to invite you to take a moment to exactly clarify what benefits the investors will be getting through this IPO. Yes. So in a sort of a holistic thing, uh, when investors invest in that, they are investing in a Sri Lankan company uh, who has a footprint in South Asia, who has an extremely strong hold in Bangladesh, who is expanding in Africa. So they are getting this unique opportunity to invest in a Sri Lankan multinational, right? And they also have the opportunity to sort of uh, be a part of a journey in Bangladesh as well, which is one of the most strongest growing economies in the world at the moment. So uh, that would be in a sort of a holistic way and in, uh, in if you look at it from a share point of view right like I told you we have offered a 21% uh, upside straight away on capital gains plus we have a very strong dividend policy in this company where we we have a dividend policy of 40% uh, of the PAT and not hope to pay we pay this dividend policy even previously we have paid so that would continue so for an investor I would say it is, it is a mixture of capital gains plus a strong share, right, which would give you uh, a constant dividend is, uh, I think, what investors would get by being a part of our journey. And uh, that is, I think, uh, all of that is there to discuss in terms of the initial public offering. All the very best. Thank you very uh, much. With all you do. And uh, we invite our spectators and uh, everyone else out there watching to engage and be a part of this journey. Thank you very much.